Hi, I'm Cédric Lunven, Director of Developer Advocacy at DataSax, and today I want to show you how to deploy Apache Cassandra in Kubernetes using the CAS operator. Let's get started. The first things to ask is what is Cassandra? Well, Apache Cassandra is a distributed NoSQL database. You can install Cassandra on a single node. You would have about one terabyte of data, 3,000 transactions and per node, but it makes sense to install Cassandra on multiple nodes. In these architectures, there is no master. They all communicate to each other with a peer-to-peer -peer protocol called gossiping. Those nodes can be grouped as ring or data centers. With that, let's see the use case you have with this database. Well, first, the more capacity you need, the more nodes you add. If you also need more throughput, simply add new nodes. So with that, Cassandra fit all the EV writes, EV read use case. Could be time series, event streaming, log analytics, internet of things. Second range of use case for Cassandra is to leverage on the availability. The data there in the cluster is replicated multiple times. That means you can lose any of the node is not a big deal. So with that, there is no data loss and the system is always on. Remember, peer-to-peer, -peer, no master, and data is replicated? Yes, you can totally lose any of the nodes. It's not a big deal at all. So with Ranger's use case, caching, market data, pricing, or inventory, and many, many more. Then Cassandra is distributed. You might have seen in the schema before. And so with that, you can install some nodes on dedicated countries or nodes on dedicated regions and comply with GDPR laws or cope with latency constraints from your applications. Again, a lot of range of use case. You might think of banking, retail, all global company would like to benefit on the distributed capability. And last, of course, cloud native. This is community hardware. You can lose any of the node. Having bad network or not good uh, disk is not that a big deal. Everything is done asynchronously. And so you can totally implement API, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud on top of Cassandra. So how? Well, in Cassandra, in a Cassandra cluster, you would have one to multiple rings. Those rings could be distributed geographically Apple, Uber are famous to have those kind of distribution or using hybrid or multi-cloud, having the same data layer available in the multi-cloud. Yeah, so how to deploy that? Let's see. We will probably leverage on Kubernetes, right? This is the Cassandra cluster. The big blue is the cluster. Inside, you could find rings one to multiple rings, and within the rings, multiple nodes. Now there is also something called the rack in Cassandra architectures. That tells Cassandra how to distribute the data among the nodes. Because if you know that two nodes are on the same rack or the same geographical region, you may want to do the distribution of the data to lose as many data as possible if you lose this rack. So now let's see how we put these into Kubernetes. Cassandra has been available for ages in Docker, but this is a stateful container. And as such, you need to provide some volume to handle the storage, to expose port, get some environment variables, quite a lot of parameters to add, right? So first, Docker Compose can come to the rescue, but even then, in a Cassandra ring, there are some nodes tag as seeds identified by IP, and each time a node wants to join the cluster, you need to be aware of those nodes. So it's not that easy to make a, a cluster scale. You can scale nodes, you can scale seeds, it not behaves the same way. So of course, Kubernetes come to the rescue. We would need to create a dedicated custom resource to properly manage the life cycle of a Cassandra cluster. How to start, stop nodes, make the cluster scale, or even stopping part, doing some updates of the configuration, rolling restart, everything will be listened and scheduled and managed by an operator. So let's see 
how you install the operator and how it works in the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, I am on my laptop and I have installed Kind just to show you that you can run the demo even on your laptop. So first, I've created a Kind cluster using this Kind config file. I do have a single control plane and multiple workers. The reason is I need one worker per Cassandra node. Right. Then I associate Kind with kubectl to be able to do kube get nodes and get both my worker and control plane. Then I create a key space to put everything in a single place. And then first step in the key space, I create a storage class. So now you might tell, yeah, there is a default storage class, but the volume you want to mount for each Cassandra node will be specific on your needs. You want to use local storage and have the disk as fast as possible, probably. If you are running on GKE, maybe you have some dedicated faster storage. So anyway, the storage class is really custom for your environment. Important part is wait for first customer to be able to start and use the storage class. Okay, I've created simply the storage class. Then I have imported the operator. So on this time, the YAML is there. I recreate the namespace, it was there already. Create some services, the CAS operator, define the custom resource definition. All right, and a couple of accounts and uh, secrets uh, needed to have the uh, environment ready. If I go there and simply do kubectl get pods, you can see that I do have the CAS operator running, but except from that, my kube cluster is empty. If I want to show you what just happened using a schema, this is what I do, guys. I do have my CAS operator namespace, I create a couple of uh, well, secret as services and custom resource definition to handle security and webhook, all to handle the connection between the operator and the custom resource we have created. And we also have defined a storage class, which is here the kind uh, storage class for my laptop. All right, so now let's create a Cassandra cluster using the operator. First, I will define a YAML. So let's create a single node cluster for Cassandra. You can see that I'm using the Cassandra data center custom resource. Here you define the data center name, and this is how we could define multiple data centers in a single ring or in a single cluster, or maybe even having multiple clusters with multiple rings each time. You will set that with cluster name and uh, metadata name here. So we are using Cassandra. As you can see, it's an open source. So the operator is not only for data stacks enterprise, it's just open and it's worked with Cassandra versions. You define how many nodes do you like. You do the mapping with the storage class. And once the node will be set up, we want to override the default configuration providing Cassandra.yaml keys and also GVM option keys. So what I do now is going here and I will copy and apply those configuration. To be able to watch what's happening, I will watch the pod and see that I will have my STS created. So Kubernetes will create, uh, the cooperator will create a STS for each Cassandra rack. So let's see how it goes. All right, after a few minutes, time to download all the images. Now we do have the STS ready. And if I want to describe the Cassandra data center or CAS DC uh, custom resource named DC1. This is what I get. So I do have all the information coming from my YAML, of course, 
And here you can see all the events that made possible that cluster creation. So creating service, seed, all the services, creating the rack, putting the node in the rack, and created all the users needed to manage this rack. If I want to show you what it looks like, so by creating this custom resource, this is everything that we would just create. It. So we created the custom resource DC one. It, we do have a super user secret, a STS for each rack. No rack has been provided in the YAML file, so it will create one by default. Then I will create a dedicated pod for each Cassandra node. This is the name of the pod. And for each node, we will attach some persistent volume and it's all done by the STS. Now we also have some dedicated services to run all pods, only the seeds or the service. And with that, you can totally scale up your cluster in a transparent manner and all will be updated as you expect. So speaking of that, I do have here a second YAML, this time called three nodes with new config. So what I do is changing the scale, the size to three, and I'm also adding new value in the configuration. And what I do expect from the Cassandra operator is to make my cluster scale up and do the rolling restart if needed to update my settings. So to do so, I will copy my command here. So see, simply applying this new YAML. And again, I will watch my pod to see what's happened. And as you can see, it immediately starts uh, the new pod in the same STS. And now I will start Cassandra, make it available first in it. And only when the first will be available, we will start the second one. And this is all the purpose of the operator doing the step in the proper order. So again, let's see in a couple of minutes. During the time that image are pulled back off, we can try to show what happened at the Cassandra data center level. So you might see that because now we ask to scale and have the size to three, the state of the custom resource definition is not what it should. And so as a consequence, the operator will make the cluster scale to match the new state. And so we will move from this state with a single pod uh, for the STS to three pod. And this is exactly what's happening. Zero, one, two, where all the pod will be startup. But when does uh, the operator know when to start another one? Because Cassandra alone is not Kubernetes ready. At that stack, we had to create it and update and do some open source for a Cassandra management API service. This is a sidecar running in the pod just to expose a REST API for Kubernetes to know, you know, the liveness and the readiness of each pod. And if that, you see how it works. You, expo you deploy new YAML, operator will match the state of what in the YAML and what it should be and will execute the command to make the Cassandra cluster fit the reality. And with that, I'm done with the demo, but you can do the same by using this QR code and I expect you to see all of you at the workshop all together where we can plan even more, including Grafana, Prometheus, monitoring, and some uh, operation using Cassandra itself. Thank you very much and see you there.